In an ancient time, long before man conquered nature, a legendary titan ruled, even over predators dwarfing those in modern times. Just when it seemed as though mankind's era was dawning, with a seemingly divine act from the stars readying our ascension, the fact still remained beneath our feet for millions of years. Still under the assumption that the natural world and the very matter that makes it was ours to claim, we would both be introduced to and reminded of of the true force binding the earth together. God Zilla, king of the monsters, would rise to meet our foolish bid for power, with it only fueling his return. Nature's greatest defender protected it time and time again, parasitic duos seeking to multiply and destroy humanity, undersea destroyers threatening the ocean's ecology, and even alien dragons that could terraform the planet, all heads have bowed to Godzilla. However, a new and perhaps even more ancient force is on the verge of being unleashed, a being with maybe even more claim to the Earth than Godzilla himself. The king has survived and prevailed prevented world-altering events, yet for over two million years it was another, even more ancient kaiju that dominated and subjugated the world in a way that has never been replicated since. By freezing the world-destroying dragon into the event we would call the Ice Age. This would lead the King of the Monsters to, for the first time, go out of his way to accrue more power. Why is this? What level of threat could make Godzilla seem this desperate? To demonstrate why this makes the new threat so impressive, we have to first detail what has made Godzilla such a singularly dominant force up until now. The tie-in comic Godzilla Awakening shows the Alpha Titan survive the life-changing Permian Extinction Event. For those that don't know, this was caused by a giant meteor striking the Earth, leading to the death of the dinosaurs. Given our view showcasing the globe and encompassing it with the actual size of the planet, Godzilla would have withstood nearly a trillion ton-sized rock, moving at 12 miles a second, many times faster than a bullet according to scientific papers on the event. This would mean that Goji, in ancient times before he'd fed on radiation from the Earth's core for around 65 million years, had the durability to withstand enough energy required to destroy an entire country, with some calculations actually leaning more towards the multi-continental range of power output. So, Godzilla might be able to tank at least two entire continents blowing up on top of him before we even see him in a movie. This alpha predator would, like I said, rest for millennia, growing more and more powerful as he fed off of the primary fuel source from which all titans like him thrive, radiation. He would eventually be awoken by the development of nuclear weapons, however, of course shrugging off and being further empowered by the Bravo Shot nuclear test in 1954. These events are further explored in the live-action series, wherein we learn some pivotal details about the Hollow Earth, the realm beyond the center of the planet where most kaiju likely originated from. Yet still, this era already proved that man's most powerful weapons do little but empower the King Kaiju you of them all. But we further learn that the portals to the subterranean realm output energy within the 30 to 90 exahertz ranges. Typically, this form of energy is associated with phenomena like black holes or gamma ray bursts, essentially the most powerful explosions ever created outside of the Big Bang. Putting this into other terms, according to NASA, the event known as 080916C was a gamma explosion dwarfing the power of a supernova 9,000 times over. And mere portals to Hollow Earth are equal to such energies. In the modern age, Godzilla would meet many would-be rivals to his alpha status, being the greatest of all the Titans, or creatures seeking to disrupt the natural order which Godzilla fosters, such as the Mutos, who Goji deals with pretty swiftly despite their ability to outright drain the radiation or power from him, leading to his clash with Muto Prime in Godzilla Aftershock, set after his reemergence in modern 
their time. This giant super species above the typical Mutos uses his massive limbs to cause severe earthquakes just through its sheer power alone. In fact, the story's writers stated that Prime could recreate any earthquake in history and even up to magnitude 12 ones. This lining up consistently with the at least country level meteor feet, seeing as the raw energy emitted by seismic events of that scale yield similar amounts of power. Muto Prime then grows in strength, feeding on radiation, yet Godzilla still kills the Titan through blasting it with energy from the plates along his spine, despite being weakened from their clash. So given the fact that Muto Prime's own body can exert and withstand up to magnitude 12 levels of seismic energy, Godzilla should furthermore scale to country level as he can withstand attacks from and ultimately kill the beast. So both man's greatest weapons and the very earth beneath our feet are are firmly within the Titan's ability to withstand and alter. This leads into King of the Monsters, wherein Godzilla finally meets his match in the three-headed demonic dragon from space, King Ghidorah. Godzilla's most powerful foe yet is shown generating massive sized storms in an effort to terraform the planet, putting his foot down as the true ruler of the Earth. Judging by the sheer scale of the storms and considering the fact that Ghidorah is also moving these weather anomalies across the globe just by flying around inside of them, we can calculate that Ghidorah was generating and withstanding up to enough energy to destroy a country. Not only would Godzilla scale to this, seeing as Ghidorah just passively exerts this level of force, much less than what he'd be able to endure in actual combat, with Goji being able to hurt Ghidorah even if he is weaker than him outright. But his burning form, having fused with the life energy of the killed Mothra, absolutely dominates the three-headed dragon and just vaporizes him with his mere aura. After ultimately defending his title as the Alpha, ruler of all other monsters, we transition into Godzilla versus Kong where the King of the Monsters usurps the power of his latest rival. Many statements prove that Godzilla is simply Kong's superior, and he did win the fight after all. This is very impressive for Goji, considering that Kong would stood traveling to Hollow Earth, with it being stated that one would have to endure the gravitational inversion of the planet. So using the Earth's mass, and essentially calculating the amount of pressure which its entire gravity produces, exerting on a single giant ape-sized object, it would yield 330 13 petatons, or yet again, enough energy to destroy multiple continents. So furthermore, we're shown that these behemoths simply overpower the forces which bind the very planet together. Yet Godzilla stands on top. Still though, the true villains of the film use energy from Hollow Earth, one remaining head of Ghidorah, and Godzilla countering technology to create Mecha Godzilla, who did admittedly throttle Goji for a good while, but we still have to keep in mind that he was only half power after beating Kong, with the director of Godzilla vs. Kong stating that this simply would have not happened otherwise. So a fresh Godzilla likely would have still beaten this hollow earth empowered Mecha Goji. Again, a robot fueled by energy more than equal to that of the entirety of Earth's gravity still would not be enough to beat a full power Godzilla. However, tying back to what we know about the Hollow Earth wormholes, it's very likely that Godzilla would sit above the likes of 9,000 times supernova gamma bursts, seeing as Apex went to the effort of actually going to Hollow Earth and digitizing its energies to empower Mecha Godzilla. Feeling that absorbing the power from a simple portal, which appear all the time on the Earth's surface, would not be enough to take out the King of the Monsters, which again, a healthy Godzilla would have explicitly overpowered these Hollow Earth Gamma Burst analogous energy beams. Now, with Godzilla's legendary battles detailed, we can get into how the new movie takes it even farther. In Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, the world of the Hollow Earth is thoroughly showcased, from both the lost tribe of giant apes to their subjugated Godzilla-like beast known as Shimo. Throughout this film, Godzilla, detecting the upcoming battle, goes on a quest to gain more and more power, first drawing the radiation from a nuclear plant, showcasing a form resembling his burning mode from the prior film, which the movie's novel draws a parallel to. Remember that for later. He then takes on Tiamat, a titan 
Titan, who had previously clashed with the Big G in the Dominion comic, killing her and resting as he absorbs her DNA. This mutates Godzilla into what is called his evolved state, overcharging him in the words of promotional material. So we have Goji now with two layers of power-ups, his first one evoking his prior ultimate form. This pink transformation was in fact inspired by the Kaioken from Dragon Ball in the words of the movie's art director, which famously gave the series protagonist Goku up to a 20 times power and speed boost, with Monarch's kaiju experts assessing that both his body and energy reserves have been amplified, the latter up to 20 times. Official figures for the series refer to this as the strongest form of the Big G yet, which checks out seeing as he takes on the super ancient ice titan Shimo, who is also stated to be the biggest threat that Godzilla or Kong have ever faced, with that latter titan also getting an amp in the film in the form of his cyborg arm. This all going to show that it is most likely the case that everything is just ramped up since King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. Everyone has new power-ups and the main foe is the biggest one yet. Said foe Shimo, an ancient being which even froze King Ghidorah for all of those millennia, was shown capable of crippling Kong just by freezing his hand and thus putting him in a near-death state. Where Whereas Godzilla, in his full power evolved form, gets totally frozen over and just breaks out and continues to fight Shimo after Mothra aids in deterring the beast's frost beam. And this is just after fighting Kong when last time, this brought them both down to half power. It really goes to show the level at which evolved Godzilla is operating at. Not only does Godzilla beat Kong again after getting likely off guarded and knocked out at first by his new arm, he also fights Shimo with it being stated to be a toss-up between the two according to the novel. So again, a threat greater than King Ghidorah, at least per these statements, someone who could terraform the entire Earth, Godzilla now has a 50-50 chance to defeat with his new power-up. As far as evolved versus burning, everything seems to point to Godzilla's pink form being the best of the two, like I said. It's also worth noting that the burning state was kind of an unstable transformation, what with Godzilla being about to explode even before attaining it after Sarazawa nuked him, whereas his evolved form is predicated upon Godzilla reaching a similar burning form, another titan's power similar to how he gets Mothra's energy, and then resting and allowing this all to symbiotically assimilate into his very DNA. A much more complete and balanced transformation in my opinion. But how much stronger does it actually make Godzilla? Well, we actually have a few ways to quantify this. Aside from certain Chinese and official social media accounts calling him twice as powerful or just Kaioken times two, the movie itself implies at least energy attacks like his atomic breath or EMPs, spine blasts, would all be 20 times beyond what he was previously capable of, meaning we should be able to look at his best feat and multiply that accordingly. It's safe to say that by this point, he could blast apart 20 life-wiping multi-continental meteors at the same time, or even more impressively output over 20 times as much energy as Ghidorah's storms, where again, he just passively generated and and withstood. Whereas Godzilla can, even in his King of the Monsters base form, harm Ghidorah even if it is a losing battle. Not to mention he'd be beyond 20 times the gravity of the planet, putting him firmly within the planet-busting range of power, or even star level and above since he'd be 20 times beyond 9,000 times over supernova celestial gamma explosions. Given the 30 exahertz found within the Hollow Earth portals, which even Kong or the sci-fi man-made machines can endure, with Mecha Godzilla likely being powered by far more than this. Godzilla, at his peak, would dwarf forces just shy of the creation of the very universe insofar as calculated and observed celestial phenomena. As for his other stats or abilities, by the time of the latest film, we have Ghidorah, Kong, and even the fodder Scar King all dodging or avoiding atomic breath, with Godzilla being able to tag pretty much all of those guys in close quarters, meaning he would be able to dodge or react to attacks moving at the speed of light, since that's how fast radiation typically travels. Mecha Godzilla's beams are also referred to as a laser. In terms of hacks, he obviously can fire said speed of light beams. He's fairly skilled in hand-to-hand, -hand, at least insofar as 
Moana tend to be, sort of like bears in the real world, since he's able to counter and defeat Kong, who actually does have a legit fighting style and uses the terrain against his opponents. Mechagodzilla is also an AI-driven ghost powered by the peak of technology. And again, that movie's director implied a full-strength Goji would have beaten him. He can emit EMPs to disable technology, occasionally blast omnidirectional nuclear pulses, with all of his radioactive energy likely attacking matter at the most fundamental level, seeing as nukes in the monsterverse do that very thing. This means Godzilla either affects things like protons directly, or even beyond that to the Planck scale if we take that literally, meaning he might be able to bypass durability to a point, hypothetically destroying something at a level 100 million trillion times smaller than a proton. He can also absorb radiation or even the life energy of other kaiju to heal from near death or gain power-ups. He has a pseudo-telepathic connection to titans and nature at large, being able to detect upcoming threats or hail other monsters to certain locations, and despite being cold-blooded, he's totally unaffected by freezing temperatures, and he's also resistant to extreme nuclear fire. That's also not to mention the Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong tie-in comics, which while being stated non-canon to either property by the writer, the promotional material at least claims it to be the monsterverse. And if it's just like a split timeline where all of the same lore and scaling applies to both Godzillas, then the canon counterpart should in all likelihood be able to replicate whatever he did in the crossover. I made a whole video breaking down that one and other times Godzilla fought various fictional universes, but to summarize, a version of Superman, stated to be just as strong as the main one, considers base Godzilla to be both fast and strong enough to contend with him, with Godzilla's kryptonite-adjacent atomic breath putting the Man of Steel into a coma. So it's possible that evolved Kaioken times 20 Godzilla is literally 20 times stronger than the main comic book Superman, who is beyond the concepts of space-time, can KO beings capable of destroying the multiverse in a single punch, and can fly backwards or forwards in time.